Last time on Round Sailing, we continued the lamination of the inside of the hull. We had our neighbor helping us, and Johan also started preparing the bow to be laminated. We're on our way to Ystad now uh, to look at a sailboat and it's not just any sailboat, it's a Scandi 42 which our naval architect Ulf has designed. So that was his latest work before our boat and uh, the boat just arrived to Ystad. Uh, the owner has sailed it for the past year to the Caribbean and is now on his way back to Finland. So it's going to be really exciting to have a look through the boat and see some similarities to our design and uh, to get some inspiration for smart solutions. So we're on board the Scandi 42 together with Östen, who's the owner of the company that builds these boats. I don't know, can you tell us a little bit about the design criteria behind, behind the boat? Well, it first started when we were sailing on Biscaya a couple of years ago. And we were sitting outside and freezing and think, thinking, this can't be the way to sail long sail. Yeah. So we started thinking about how to do and we, we spoke to Ulf Rögeberg, who's the designer of this boat. And we decided to design a boat with a doghouse. Yeah. So we can do night watches inside. And how, so how is it, how has it turned out, you think? With it has turned out very well. It's so nice and cozy to sit inside and do night watches. And I think Everybody who has tried to sail a boat with a doghouse will never go back to a normal boat. That's, yeah. that's one thing for sure. Good to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's nice to hear. That's very nice. And you don't have to put sail clothes on that often as you used to do. You can go inside when it starts to rain. And so we had sail 20,000 20, nautical miles with this boat and it has worked very well. And this boat is a very light boat, huh? Yeah, it's very light. It's a uh, seven and a half ton for a 42 feet yeah. long boat, so it's quite quite light. And it's if you want to go fast, it's a fast cruising cruising boat. The building of the boat is made in sandwich and in vacuum infusion, and we have tried to do everything in vacuum infusion infusion to save weight and also get a stronger hull. The interior is made in it's called wood composite. So you have a foam, like a divin cell, yeah, like board. a divin cell foam, and then you have plywood on each side that is glued together, and it's become very light and strong. So all the furnitures are made of that one, and uh, we have tried to think all the time to use lightweight materials, and uh, and we have tried also to keep all the heavy equipment in the middle of the boat because that's the right place where you want to have all the weights. You don't mm. want to have the weights in the end of the boat. So that's, yeah. Hobby horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that is special with this boat is the deck. Marine deck is the brand of it. Yeah. And, uh, and we put it on a boat for... It was 1996. Okay. We put it the first time on a boat. And it's still in good shape. I've yeah. seen the boat for a couple of months ago. When I saw that boat I decided we don't put anything else than cork. Yeah. Because if you drop any tools it won't be any marks on it. And uh, it's better in in uh, in uh, insulation properties yeah. than teak. A lot lighter too. Lighter also and yeah, it feels really nice. It feels like you would have good grip yeah, on it even yeah. when it's yeah, wet. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's a lot cheaper than a teak deck. No, it's not. almost the same as teak, it's, but it lasts longer. And I have to ask, since you just sailed across the Atlantic two times, how was the sailing with this boat? Did you cross from Cape Verde to, to Grenada in 
12 and a half days oh, the average speed of 7.1 knots wow. only one day we would average speed 6.8 really good yeah. mm. and since the boat is so light how do you think it behaves when the wind and the waves are up we had the maximum speed was about 60 knots oh wow yeah and uh, it behaved quite good even if it was light yeah it just went like over the waves like this down below you find a big aft cabin with a head. The galley in front of the salon with a bigger head on port side. And then the master cabin in the front of the boat. We're going out for a little test sail to try the Scandi 42. How does it feel, Johan? It feels very good. I can tell that it it's a really light boat, it uh, accelerates very fast. And the steering is what a difference from the. It's so light and responsive, you can feel the, the rudder. If anyone is interested, this boat is for sale. Or you can order your own customized Scandi 42. Sitting inside when you're sailing and still have perfect visibility of the sails. So it's so silent. Yeah, it is. So you hardly notice when it starts blowing hard outside when it's so so quiet inside. Yeah. So you keep most of the night watches yeah. from in here? Yeah, sitting here inside. Yeah. Last night we were sitting here inside and uh, had very cozy when it was quite cold outside. And this is also a good place. Yeah. Mm. I often sit here on night watches mm. and you have quite good sight over, over the horizon. Yeah, one thing that is bit different with this deck salon is that you have really 360 degree yeah. visibility yeah. also yeah. looking yeah, aft yeah. it's a lot of boats that have bad side from the back yeah. yeah what do you think it's good is it then we made a tack and sailed back to the marina Such a fun afternoon and that we even got to go out sailing. I mean we haven't sailed on a big sailboat since uh, our ROM 2 and the boat was so comfortable, smooth, quiet and so easily driven and fast. Back on the farm, Johan started the day with a run, and then he went out to the stable to measure and cut fiberglass.
After some sanding, he laminated the inside of the bow and the stem. We do four layers of fiberglass here as well, but you unlaminated one layer at a time. The stem isn't made from cedar wood, but from solid oak. This makes it extra sturdy and strong. Yeah, yesterday was a really productive day. I managed to finish the whole stem with all the four layers of Biax fiberglass. Uh, it was a little bit of a puzzle to get all the pieces to conform to the shape here with all these corners and everything, but I think it turned out really good. So the plan for today is to apply that primer layer up here in the bow. And the reason we're doing that up here in the bow is just so we can laminate during daytime uh, and having that primer on makes that possible and a little bit easier since it stops uh, some of that off gassing that you get from the wood uh, when the temp is going up. Uh, so the reason we didn't use it on the rest of the hull was because we were laminating when the temp was falling and then it's really not necessary since the air inside uh, the timber isn't expanding when the temp is going down. So I will apply that and put peel ply on top so we don't have to sand as much before we start laminating up here. Okay, so I'm finished with the bow, with the primer and the peel ply. So the next step now is to cut the length of fiberglass that we need for the bow area and for the stern. And then uh, it's back to laminating again. end of August now but uh, it's still full summer it's been uh, really warm these past days so that is so nice even if we're working and back to routines it's uh, still summer I'm out here on the old manure pad we have Luba mowing the lawn the grass really turned out good uh, on this side uh, on the other side there's still a lot of weeds that we have to deal with uh, and I'm cleaning up here it's a lot of weeds and all the manure that has now turned into soil so there's been growing a lot of weeds in it 
we moved a little maple tree that was growing right next to the wall. We moved it out there and it looks really nice. We hope that it survives. And then we have been fixing with the gravel path leading back here. So we're almost ready, just need some more fiber cloth to put underneath. There's always a project to do here when you live like this, but it's fun. much better than before. Whew. These uh, fiberglass rolls are uh, quite heavy, 51 kilos or around 100 pounds. So I think that means that we have around 111 square meters um, on one of these rolls with 450 gram biax fiberglass. So as you can imagine it adds up pretty quickly. We're using four of these rolls uh, of 450 gram on the inside of the hull, uh, even a bit more since we're laminating a bit thicker around the keel area. And then roughly the same amount on the outside, but with uh, 600 gram. And then on top of that, we have roughly the same amount of epoxy. So for one roll of this, 50 kilos, we're using a bit less than 50 kilos of epoxy, maybe 45 kilos. That's why we buy epoxy by the drum. <laughs> and speaking of buying epoxy by the drum, as some people have asked us why we're not using vinyl ester instead since it's much cheaper than epoxy. But the truth is that the price difference between epoxy and vinyl ester isn't that big when you're buying epoxy by the drum. It's so much more friendly to your body working with epoxy compared to, you know, having those fumes with, from styrene. Of course, epoxy isn't perfect. You could get allergy from getting it on your skin. And we're also using masks when we're you know, using a lot of epoxy since there are some fumes when the epoxy is hardening and I guess over time you could develop allergies from that as well. So that's just an extra precaution that we take. But there's really no strong odor when you're working with epoxy. And not to mention that epoxy in my opinion is so much better than vinyl ester. And since we're building a strip planked hull it's really important that we have a waterproof hull and epoxy is better in that respect compared to vinyl ester and polyester. And even if there is a small price difference between vinyl ester and epoxy, uh, I think we paid twice for the epoxy compared to vinyl ester. In the end, the resale value will be better and also that extra money is just such a small part of the whole uh, hull cost. So. I think it's definitely worth going with epoxy. 12 pieces of fiberglass prepared for the aft on port side. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching all of our projects and for cheering on us. A big thanks as well to everyone who contributes to our production. It's because of you that we can make these videos. See you next week.